everlasting God, whose will it is that all should come to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Inspire our witness to him, that all may know the power of your forgiveness and the hope of your resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Please kneel as you are able. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Epistle to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies to the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. The, their God is in the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 1987, during my first year of seminary, I was an intern for a woman who spent her life doing street ministry. That was quite unusual in those days. More unusual was who this woman was. She was an upper middle class white lady in her late 60s. She was happily married, lived in a good neighborhood, and had a bunch of grandchildren. At a time when many people in her situation would be playing more golf or growing a garden or just traveling more often, she was determined to help the homeless on the streets of New Haven, Connecticut. I've spoken of her before because she made such an impact on me as a young man. She spent her days in the alleys and the abandoned buildings of the city, reaching out to the addicted, the destitute, the mentally ill, men and women of the city. She was passionate about their welfare. She spent almost all her money on them and she gave all of her time. She was determined to get as many people as possible off the street and into a better life. I ended up as her intern because her family was throwing a fit. Her husband and her children were incredibly worried for her. They worried for her safety. She did this ministry alone with her pocketbook over her arm. They begged her to stop, to stop being so reckless and foolhardy. They tried to talk her out of her ministry. 
they encouraged her to find any other ministry. But over and over again, she refused. She refused to quit. And so they demanded that at least she should not undertake her ministry alone. When she worked on the streets, her family said, you have to have someone with you. As a result, she applied to the Divinity School for a student intern, and she wound up with me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> for a year, I followed behind her in awe, marveling at her faith and determination. I don't think I was much help to her ministry, but her ministry changed my life. When I think about the Pharisees in our gospel for today, I'm reminded a little of the husband and kids of my street ministry mentor. They wanted her off the street. They wanted her to quit and find another ministry, one that was safer. I wonder if the Pharisees and perhaps even the disciples felt a little bit the same way when they watched the authorities becoming increasingly angry at Jesus. When the Pharisees warn him about Herod this morning, are they really saying, give it up, Jesus, cut it out. Go find some other kind of ministry. This one is getting just too dangerous. Herod wants you dead. Give it up and try something else. It wasn't bad advice, was it? I mean, knowing how Jesus ends up on Good Friday, maybe he could have saved his own skin if he had just done what those religious leaders suggested. But that wasn't Jesus' way, was it? Jesus trusted God with all of his heart and his mind and his soul and his strength. And if God wanted him to continue all the way to Jerusalem, all the way to the cross, then that is what he would do. In spite of all the warnings, Jesus, like my friend in New Haven, would not quit. He would not go away and give up his ministry. Now, I don't know about you, but every single day of my life, there are pressures and forces that act in my life just like those Pharisees. They are the pressures of time, pressures of my schedule and my responsibilities. They are sometimes just the forces of simple exhaustion or the many constant distractions that I encounter every day. Like the Pharisees, these forces want me to quit, to go away, to give up when it comes to the disciplines of my own faith life. Because they say there are other things that need to get done. They would have me trust God less and my own needs more. These pressures and forces are like the enemies of the cross of Christ that Paul talks about this morning. Because their God is the belly, they would have us find God in our own daily appetites and duties and responsibilities and schedules. They would have us give up practicing our faith, living our faith, because there are just so many other things that need to get done. How many of us this morning have already given up on our Lenten disciplines at this point because of those other pressures and responsibilities in our lives? No need to raise hands. <laughs> but seriously, how many of us start Lent with the greatest of intentions and four or five days later, pfft, it's over? How many of us never had one in the first place, never had a Lenten discipline. We don't have time for one. Because of those same pressures, how many of us have given up 
on saying our prayers every day, on making just a little bit of time for God in quiet every day, or reading scripture. How many of us have given up on some relationship in our life, one that needs our loving time and attention because we just have too many other things to do? How many of us have given up on living that healthier lifestyle we always intended to begin? Because our bodies are temples, great gifts given to us by our God. How many have given up ever finding the time to get involved in a ministry, even though we've been thinking about it for months or maybe even years? How many of us have given up even considering the idea of giving 10% of what I have back to God? Unlike Jesus, who held his course all the way to Jerusalem, it is so easy for us to heed the Pharisees and to turn aside, to lose our way, to step back or step out from the journey of faith. I know I lose my way far more often than I would like to admit. But what Jesus wants us to know is that ultimately there really is no other way. All other ways will ultimately leave us empty and let us down. No one on their deathbed was ever thankful for their busy schedule. The way of Jesus may lead us to Jerusalem, our own Jerusalem, and even to our own cross. But lest we forget there can be no resurrection if there is no cross. There is no Easter Sunday without Good Friday. So stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. That's what Paul says to us this morning. Stand firm in the Lord. Amen. Let us stand and recall the ancient teachings of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to death, living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no way. We believe.
please kneel as you are able for the prayers. In this holy season of Lent, let us pray for the church and for all people in their need. For all who seek to know Christ, and for all the baptized in their Lenten pilgrimage, that they may be led by the Spirit to the Word of Life. Lord, in your mercy. For the people and nations of the world, and for those in authority, that power and glory may not turn us from the way of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are afflicted and oppressed, that thou will open our ears to their cry. Lord, in your mercy. For this community, that we may believe in our hearts and confess with our lips that Christ is Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the infirm, those who are institutionalized, and those who are dying. Lord, in your mercy. You are. Please join me in lifting up to God those who are sick or in need and who have asked for our prayers. Jean Bjorklund, Doug Burgoyne, Joan Dibiasi, Marguerite Ellett, Cameron Flippin, Shannon Gray. Mary Harrison, Gwyn Jordan, Jody Lomenzo, Will McCormick, Tom Mosley, Jim Parkinson, Julie Poitavent, Judy Rifo, Courtney Reynolds, Doria, Bob Seiler, Struther Smith, Lee Stevens, Joe Touchen, Rosalie Vaughn, Otto Warmbier, Jerry Wayne. We also pray for Lizzie Baker, Russell Ferguson, David Barnett. We pray for the newly born, especially Peter Archer, Peter Archer Castleberg, son of Liz and Bill Castleberg and grandson of Paige Castleberg, and Lillian Reese Reard, daughter of Taylor and Ralph Reard, and granddaughter of the Reverend Bob and Susan Friend. We pray for all who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially Stephen Watts, Susan Early, Marianne Radcliffe, Liza House, and Tucker Call who celebrate their birthday today. We pray for those who have died, especially John F. Clark, Mary Lou Disney, and Virginia Ward Galt, and for A. Frank Robinson, Betsy Robinson Mapp, and Mr. and Mrs. Albert S. Tanner, in whose memory the greens at the altar are given. Lord God, come to our aid and grant that your grace, by your grace, we may walk in the footsteps of the crucified Christ. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning, St. James's. Welcome, everyone, and a special welcome and thank you to our children and cherubs choirs this morning. Thank you guys for being with us. I can always tell when the children's choir is singing at 9 o'clock, half the congregation moves upstairs, <laughs> up to the balconies. How about the new bulletin today, huh? Yeah, well, we're going to, this is, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Russell. Where's Russell? Thank Russell. He did it. There's the guy. This is an experiment. We're just trying it out. So we would welcome any and all feedback you might have about it about the way things are placed, how it reads, all of those sorts of things. We are doing this um, for Lent and into a little bit of Easter and see how it goes. We'll be changing it around from time to time as we try out new ways of communicating and welcoming people. So I hope that you will feel free to give us any and all feedback. It's all welcome, negative or positive, please. Today is our annual meeting Sunday when we um, meet as a parish to elect our vestry and to review the previous year and to talk about the year coming up, that will begin immediately at the end of this meet at the end of this service. So during the recessional, before we do the dismissal, I will actually call the meeting to order. And that will give you an opportunity to um, pass, they'll pass, the ushers will pass out the annual reports if you have young people to take to Sunday school, please do, but please come back for the important business of our parish. The meeting lasts about 35 to 45 minutes. It's not that long. You can get a cup of coffee downstairs if you need one, but come back and be with us. Lots of thank yous in the life of our parish and people we should need to recognize this morning, so I hope you'll be with us. Don't forget, Womankind is coming up this coming week, and they are sold out which is just fantastic. They need some volunteers to help um, run the event. There are so many little details and so much hospitality that we offer people who come from around the Northeast to be at Womankind. So if you'd like to give a couple of hours here or there to help volunteer, um, there are sign-up sheets in the Narthex, and I hope that you will. Um, our preacher next Sunday will be the Reverend Becca Stevens, who is one of the speakers at Womankind, and she will preach at the 9 o'clock service. And then after the 9 o'clock service, she's going to lead a special forum for all of us guys. It's going to be a special forum for all of us guys. Down, will that be next door? Or down, that'll be downstairs, right? Downstairs in the Parkinson room. And uh, the ladies will have a reception next door in Valentine Hall. So that will be next Sunday after the 9 o'clock service. And then last but not least, please don't forget that our youth choir is having their even song tonight at 5 p.m. Always a special and beautiful service. So I hope you'll come back for that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Let's have the children come forward to help us celebrate the Eucharist. Please come up and sit at the altar rail or on the carpet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God grace and grace. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, we are sinners. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son born of a woman to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood we reconcile us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy... And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, <coughs> We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength 
for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our sweetly bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
who are celebrating their birthdays or, or who would like prayer for any reason are invited to come forward to the altar rail. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as your faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
The 216 annual meeting of St. James's Episcopal Church is now called to order. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hang out right here. You'll, you'll be behind the table. 